In this study, I'm going to talk about the subject of the men in black and the Christian life or the Christian walk. And this is not going to be about whether or not the men in black exist or whether or not alien, aliens exist. It's going to be about an enemy or force that consistently shows up in the Christian's life, which has similar characteristics to the men in black. And that is your adversary, the devil, and his henchmen. But 1 Peter 5, 8, a very popular verse, says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Now, there are many little devils out there to wreak havoc. Just like there's a main devil. There's one devil, but many devils. Uh, you don't have much teaching or preaching on this subject of the spirit world. And for this reason, they don't have much resistance. But let's get into some of these similar characteristics that they share with the men in black. Number one is they want to keep you quiet. The force going against Christians wants to keep us silent. Very similar to the men in black who keep men silent about things that they've seen and experienced. The forces of darkness that we fight against would like to keep you quiet about the things of God. But the Apostle Paul teaches we should speak of the things of God. He says in 1 Corinthians 1, 5, that in everything you are enriched by Him in all utterance and in all knowledge. He says in Ephesians six nineteen, and for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. The devil would hate for you to open your mouth boldly. Just like the men in black will use fear tactics to keep witnesses silent about something they've seen, they don't want the truth to get out. The devil doesn't want the truth to get out. Now, the men in black, there's stories about them. And this isn't going to be a discussion about whether or not these are true stories. This is a illustration. But in 1947, a man named Harold Dahl claimed to have been warned not to talk about his UFO sighting by a man in a dark suit. In the mid-1950s, the UFOologist Albert K. Bender claimed he was visited by men in dark suits who threatened and warned him, warned him not to continue investigating UFOs. Bender maintained that the men in black were secret government agents who had been given the task of suppressing evidence of UFOs. The UFOologist John Keel claimed to have had encounters with men in black and referred to them as demonic supernaturals with dark skin and or exotic facial features. According to the UFOologist Jerome Clark, reports of men in black represent experiences that don't seem to have occurred in the world of conscience, conscious reality. So this evil force that a, attacks a Christian wants to keep you silent, just like these MIBs want to keep people silent that have seen some things. The forces we fight want you to keep silent about your salvation and about the gospel. The devil doesn't want you to let anyone know about what happened that moment you believed the gospel. The moment when you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and his bloody death, burial, and resurrection to be your payment for sin. The rulers of the darkness of this world hate that. They hate your testimony. And that's why Revelation 12, 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. If you're a Christian then you have already overcome. You have overcome the wicked one. And the evil force coming against you is a defeated foe. However, they don't want you helping other people to be overcomers. They don't want you putting out your testimony in the gospel. This is why they come to you the best way they can to silence you. Just like the men in black will use their fear tactics to silence men. The devil and unclean spirits will use fear to silence the Christian. Maybe they will threaten you by saying you'll lose your job, you'll lose your family, your friends, your reputation. 
All they can take away is worldly things. People have set up treasures for themselves down here, and that's all they're worried about. But Matthew six nineteen and 20 says, Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. All the stuff down here is just temporal junk. As Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4.18, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Now fear is a good thing unless your fear is in man or in something contrary to God. The fear of man bringeth a snare. If you fear the world more than God, then you're going to live. You're not going to live for God. You're going to live for the world. The Lord hasn't given us the spirit of fear when it comes to salvation. We shouldn't fear losing salvation. Uh, we shouldn't fear losing our life because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Uh, we shouldn't fear suffering shame for His name. We shouldn't fear a martyr's death. If you're saved, you're already sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, and nothing can separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The evil forces of darkness will use fear to keep you quiet. But if there's nothing to fear but God... Why are you fearing these forces of darkness? Why are you fearing your reputation will be ruined with the world? But the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The wicked one wants rid of the words of God. He wants to silence the words of God. It all started in Genesis 3 when he said, Yea, hath God said, Thou shalt not surely die. He wants to silence the words of God. And if you have the high praises of God in your mouth and a two-edged sword in your hand, then you are going to be speaking the words of God. But the devil wants to put a silencer on the, on the weapon. And he'll deceive you with modern versions of the Bible. He can silence the word of God that way. In Acts 8.37, the Ethiopian eunuch says, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And in many modern versions of the Bible, those words have been taken away. And in a way, the Ethiopian eunuch was silenced, if you have a modern version of the Bible. The devil didn't like those words. He wanted rid of the words. He wanted to cover up the truth. Uh, Psalms 119.11 says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. If you have the words in your heart, no amount of silencing can take it away from you. Somebody could take away your book, but you still have the words. And it is the plan of the prince of the power of the air to silence the words coming out of the Bible believer's mouth, whether it be through sin, distractions, new versions of the Bible, through fear tactics, or whatever else. But moving on, what are some more similarities between the men in black and the forces of darkness that we fight against? Number two, they want you to forget. As a young kid, I would watch an animated series of the men in black and, of course, watch the movies as a very young kid of the Men in Black. And on the movie, they had something called a Neuralizer. Now, I'm not sure if the uh, supposed real Men in Black used this, but the people on the show in the movie did. And this is something the Men in Black would use to erase the memory of those who had seen aliens or seen some event that they didn't want getting out in the public. They not only erased memory, but also put in false memories. The devil also likes to erase things out of a person's heart and put something else in your heart. In Mark 4.15, it says, And these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And if you don't stay in the Word of God and in prayer, you can forget some things. You can forget what God has done for you. You can find yourself at such a bad time in your life that if you don't remember what God has already done for you, then you'll have a false idea placed in your mind that the Lord has never helped you or that God doesn't love you. And the devil can cause you to forget about the things of God and replace those things with worldly junk that you're pumping in your mind in replace of the things of God.
And Paul says to Timothy in 1 Timothy 4, 6, he says, If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. So he wants Timothy to put the people in remembrance of something. Repetition in teaching and preaching is a key thing. The more someone hears something, the less likely the devil will be able to cause them to forget it. The Holy Spirit of God himself will bring things to your remembrance. As it says in John 14, 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, the more word of God you have pumped into your mind, the more he can bring it into your remembrance. The only thing God will forget is your sins and your iniquities. He says, your sins and iniquities will I remember no more. But the word of God, the things you've put in your, your mind, he's going to bring that to your remembrance. He's not going to come back and say, remember this sin you did, even if you've got gotten forgiveness and confess you've confessed it up and you've you've got that thing victory you got victory over it he's not going to come back and say remember you did this or that but he's going to bring the word of god to your remembrance this isn't true of the evil forces of darkness they remember everything you've done they keep account so that they can accuse you threaten you keep you silent the devil is called the accuser of the brethren but moving on, another similarity we see is, number three, they make you think they don't exist. A mark of the men in black is that they don't actually want people to believe that they're real. And a great preacher said, one of the best tricks the devil has is to make you believe he doesn't even exist. But did you know a lot of Satanists don't even believe in the devil? They themselves believe they are their own God. And this is just how the devil has deceived them. If they believed in the devil, then they would probably end up believing in God and in hell. But the devil doesn't want them to think it's real so that they'll just go on living their life and being their own final authority. And if they cause people to think, if the rulers of darkness cause people to think they aren't real, then when someone tries to show proof of their existence, they then think the person is crazy. They may say, you think the devil himself or demons actually attack and cause harm to people? They think it's a fairy tale or just something that happened back in Bible times. But 1 Peter 5, 8 calls the devil your adversary. And Peter calls him that because at one point he is going to attack everyone personally at some point in your life. Number four. They make you think they work for someone that they don't really work for or make you think they are someone else. And an illustration of this is a man named Dr. Herbert Hopkins was working as a consultant on a UFO case in Maine. And one evening he received a phone call from someone pretending to be an activist in the UFO community asking him if he could visit Hopkins to discuss the case and only minutes later, the man arrived. The man was wearing a black suit and a black tie and had very unusual facial appearances with no hair or eyebrows and an extremely pale figure. And Hopkins' dog began barking erratically the minute the man entered the home. After the bizarre visitor was finished questioning him about the UFO case, the visit got even stranger. And here's how it went according to the website, The Night Sky. It says the men in black informed Hopkins that there were two coins in Hopkins' pocket, which was correct, and asked him to remove one. Hopkins compiled and held the coin, a shiny new penny, in the palm of his hand. The man in black told Hopkins to watch the coin closely. After a few moments, the coin took on a silvery appearance and then appeared to be going out of focus. It then began to fade and eventually disappeared altogether. The man in black informed Hopkins that the coin would never be seen again. He then inquired to whether Hopkins was familiar with alleged UFO abductee Barney Hill. Hopkins replied that he had heard of Hill, 
but was under the impression that he had died in the not too distant past and the man in black informed hopkins that that was correct he said barney didn't have a heart just like you no longer have a coin and it should be noted that barney hill actually died of a cerebral hemorrhage so the mib then gently suggested that hopkins destroy any material he had related to the ufo case he didn't want the truth to get out he wanted to silence hopkins and he used a fear tactic so hopkins extremely shaken by the encounter followed the advice of the man and burned all the files he had related to the case while he had rep repeated phone troubles after after this and the phone company said his line had been tampered with maybe to tap it but he never saw the man again so the man used fear tactics to get him to destroy all the evidence he had for a ufo but now notice how these men in black appear to be someone good at first or maybe working for the cia or the fbi or some government agency and this is just like satan and his ministers second corinthians 11 14 through 15 says a no marvel for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. The Pharisees appeared beautiful outward, but inward they were full of dead men's bones. The Bible talks about wolves in sheep's clothing. There are men going around as ministers of righteousness, but really they are full of devils. If you read in the Old Testament, you will read how the Lord allowed a lying spirit in the mouth of of the false prophets so just like the men in black will lie about their true identity to accomplish their mission the devil and his minions would do the same thing and this is why you have many antichrists entered into the world this is why you have men lying in wait to deceive this is why you have joyce myers benny hinn joel osteen td jakes john MacArthur, rick warren or anyone else that's a heretic or a false teacher with a false gospel and this is why you have evil angels or unclean spirits appearing to men who start false cults like joseph smith they appear as angels of light to deceive they pretend to be something they're not just like the men in black do in many of the stories but what's another similarity number five their purpose is to keep you from believing that there is something other than human life and when you think of men in black what do you think of for most people they think of will smith but for a conspiracy theorist they think of a group of men whose purpose is to keep people from knowing about extraterrestrial life or any visitor from outer space but the devil doesn't want you to know about a certain visitor from above he doesn't want you to know about a man that came into his own and his own received him not he doesn't want you to know about a real visitor from outer space from above space uh, john three thirteen says that no man hath ascended up to heaven but he that came down from heaven even the son of man which is in heaven and in psalms it says the fool has said in his heart there is no god as long as the devil can keep men believing that there is no god or keep men from believing on Jesus Christ to be their payment for sin, or keep people from believing that Jesus Christ has even came down in the flesh, then he has accomplished what he wants to accomplish. He has silenced the truth. He wants you to believe that the God of the Bible is a fairy tale, just like Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. But Daniel said, There is a God in heaven. And Isaiah 57, 15 says, For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is Holy, I dwell in the high and holy place. With him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble, to revive the heart of the contrite ones. So whether a person wants to believe it or not, there is a God inhabiting eternity that is the most mysterious being in existence. The Bible says how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. It says in Isaiah 55, 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. There is a being that exists 
that's not human, that knows everything you're doing, that you're going to stand in front of one day and give account of everything you've done. And there's forces of darkness that want you to believe that that's not real, that it's just human life. Now, number six, they're both associated with darkness. The men in black, the forces of darkness, they're both associated with darkness. When you think of the men in black, you think of just that, black, something dark and scary. In the book of Ephesians, Paul calls the evil forces we fight against the rulers of the darkness of this world. And when Jesus came, he was bold and said, Before Abraham was, I am. He made it known that he was the Son of God. He let it be known that he was light that shines in a dark place. John 3.19 says, And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world, and men loved darkness because their deeds were evil. Ephesians 5, 8 says, For you were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. The men in black will dress alike in black suits. But when we come back at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, we will be clothed in fine linen, clean and white. And this will be when you can really see how righteous a man is by the clothes he has on. It's not like that today. But the Bible says, Fine linen is the righteousness of saints. That's talking about the robes of righteousness we're going to get but the lord represents light and in him is no darkness ephesians 5 11 says and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them first thessalonians 5 5 ye are all the children of light and the children of the day we are not of the night nor of darkness men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. The light shows how sinful they are. Men love darkness rather than light because Jesus Christ is light and they hate Jesus Christ. The devil and unclean spirits are rulers of the darkness of this world. They hate the light, neither come to the light. They only appear as angels of light. Ephesians 6, 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So there is a force of darkness, satanic imps taking orders from who Daniel calls the God of forces. And they are trying their best to keep men in the dark. They're trying their best to blind the minds, lest the light of the glorious gospel, who is the image of God, should shine into them. They are controlling the rulers of this world because Satan has permission from the Lord to give out the kingdoms to whosoever he will. And as Christians, we need to walk with the Lord. Walk in the light as He is in the light. And if you walk in the light, then you don't have to worry about any shadow of death. We don't really have anything to fear but God. The Bible says, Fear Him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. All men in the spirits can do is kill the body. They can't take your soul. They can't take your salvation. They can't erase the blood of Jesus Christ off my new spotless record. And at the rapture, a Leviathan can't grab me by the heels as I go through the sea of glass and those waters above the heavens that are stained red by the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing can take away my eternal destination. But the men in black, they will try to kill the visitors from outer space at the end of the tribulation. When we come back, tens of thousands of his saints right behind the Lord to take over. But the Lord will smite them in their hinder parts. And Revelation 19 describes this event. It says in Revelation 19, 12 through 16, it says, His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, clean and white. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. This describes the greatest event to ever take place. And you're going to be a part of this event if you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're lost and you don't know you're going to heaven... The best thing you could do right now is come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner that you are and believe the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus Christ died. He died for your sins. He died by shedding his blood. He was buried and rose again the third day. And if you will come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner that you are and rely on him and what he did for you on the cross to be your payment for sin, 
then you can be saved and have eternal life. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Don't let nobody scare you out of getting saved. Don't let nobody scare you out of telling someone how to be saved. The only one to truly fear is God. And the thing is, God's not going to steer you in the wrong way. But I hope this has helped somebody. And this has been Men in Black and the Christian Life.